we installed Java, right? Then Eclipse we installed. We created one project. How we can create the project inside the Eclipse? File, new. If if we are not finding project here, then what we can do? We can select project. Project okay. Project is here. Otherwise, we can also go to the other option. We can select the Java project here. Java project. Then after clicking on that option, we have to give the name. What we given yesterday? FOP. Fine. So after giving that project, what we have to check? We have to check whether this option of module info is checked or not. Like we have to uncheck it. It is it checked or unchecked? Unchecked. So we have to keep that safe. We don't have to check that option. So uncheck that option and finish. So we can see the project in this side, right? In our left side. What is this name? Project Explorer. So we can open the project by double clicking on that and we can see the system library, right? In this library, we have all the contents that predefined contents of Java, right? Predefined system library, all the files will be there and we will create the project uh, or our files in source folder, SRC. So we can right click on that folder and what we have to do next? So we can create directly classes in that. The problem will be what? It will, it will not be separated. All the classes, files, everything in that project will be in same position. We, we have to search, right? If we have thousand files, it won't be good, right? If we are keeping that inside one package. So we are using what? Subfolder kind of. We are creating packages inside the project. So how we can create the package? What is the uh, what is the step we have to follow for uh, file new package? Then give the package name. We have to start with the package. Package will start with a small letter. Project name should start with the capital. Fine. So I created one. Here also we have module info. We have to uncheck that. It is unchecked, so I don't have to change it. Getting? Make sure that is unchecked. Then finish. So can you see the package inside your SRC? Yes. Then what is next step? New class. Why class? Java is a pure object oriented programming language. Do you know what is object oriented? Based, we, will, we are performing all the operations based on the object. We have to create the object. This concept we will discuss later. Not now. First we have to familiar with the basics of the Java. Then we will focus on the object oriented concepts. That will come in second module. So right now, why we are creating class is because Java is purely object oriented concept and all the objects that we are creating from a class. That's it. Object is something which we have. We will create that object using a class. It is like exactly like we can say blueprint. Before building a, before constructing a building, we will use one blueprint. For what we are using that blueprint? For the reference, right? While constructing that building, I need some references. I need some measurements. I need some uh, structure. Right, then only I can construct a building. Getting my point? So class and object is similar to blueprint and building. Object will be building, blueprint will be class. So whatever we are creating as a class can consider as a blueprint and also we can create an object. This thing we will again discuss in second module. At that time you will get more clarity because right now it is it is not clear because we are just new to the system, right? Java programming. So anyway, Java files we will create using new class. Fine. 
okay click on that class you can see the package here you can see the project and where is this package correct inside FO, fop inside src we have a package inside that package we are going to keep our so what we can give okay we will give ha huh, class name should start with capital letter here i already yesterday said one class name right what is that i given one class name yesterday you have to create and you have to uh, figure out what are the data types or how we can create the data types right what is the class name i given yesterday variable okay i right now i am going to give variables and data type so can i give space in between the class any name not only class name any name can i give any space no then what we can do underscore or second word or the ha huh, next word starting letter should be capital camel casing or pascal casing format so here i am giving variables and data type correct the name of the class is in the format right in the naming convention of java right okay so note down you have to search about what is naming convention naming naming convention in java main method we discussed yesterday right okay what is the syntax okay what is this what is this so what is the syntax of a class how we can create a class we have to give it like if it is same like you can see the file name here right variables and java dot java no sorry Dat variables and data type dot java that is the file name and class name is same as the file name correct so we created by creating a class in java we all we created the file name and also class inside that file file we created the class file name and class name is same are you realizing that in your eclipse itself you can see whenever you are creating a class your file name and class name is same so it is actually for helping jvm to execute the program understanding so if i am going to run this program i will use java file to compile using java compiler right J java c right so java compiler will compile the code and it will create a dot class file dot class file it will be variables and data types dot class correct so at that time while executing the program the class name and the file name if class name and file name is same then it is easy for jvm to run the program that is why we are focusing on giving file name and class name and here we don't have to think about that because automatically our id is helping us to create we are only creating a class it is creating a file along with that file we are creating also automatically we are creating class inside that file getting my point so what is a or if uh, in in the same java file i can also create multiple classes that is also there getting my point so at that time i should not use public one rule so only this public access modifier will be given to the class which is having the same file name only the same file name class can have this public access modifier we will discuss about public access modifier later or i can give you that idea public is a keyword we already discussed about keywords right public is a keyword which is using for giving the access like from anywhere from the project what is the public property what is called a pub public property yeah. it is common to all it is public to all right anyone can use this public keyword is also same like that anyone from the project anyone inside the project can use this 
getting my point whatever we are giving as public can be accessible can be accessible by anyone from the project is that clear we will make it clear that like more clear that in second module because these things are there in second module first we have to focus on the basic pure basic if while working with that we will like slowly we will learn all these things one by one so you will know that you will get to know what is the meaning and what is the use understanding now i am just giving you that idea public is an access modifier it is a keyword which is using for giving that access for everyone inside the project clear fine so public we will give only for the class which is having the same file name i can also have say like different classes in the same file i can create we will discuss that later getting my point so that is why public is here then what is class it is indicating this the, the one which we are creating is a class class is also a keyword it is indicating that this name that we are going to mention and whatever we are going to create here is a class so public class then the class name this is the class name right after that we are creating bracket opening and closing what is that bracket opening and closing beginning and ending like we are enclosing all the data whatever data we are going to write inside that is inside the class it is going to consider all the code inside the class so what we have created yesterday inside this class main method right we required inside a class we required a method so if it is main method then it will execute because main method is starting the execution so what is the syntax of main method public static void main string s is capital y then we can give anything here actually it is just a variable we will discuss about variable at that time you will get to know that clearly so we can give anything because it is just a variable this remaining things like string these things are predefined contents predefined class right what is this void predefined keyword it is a keyword it is predefined so i cannot change anything only in variable names variable i can change the data i can use anything instead of that no problem then after this we have to open a block of code right block of code representation is what curly bracket curly bracket is representing block of code is that clear everyone okay so inside this what we have did inside this main method how can i print something here so print statement is required right print statement what is the code for writing a completing that print statement system what is system system is a class so system s is capital dot out dot print print and print ln is there what is the difference between print and print ln so after printing the statement cursor will stay in the same line if it is print cursor will move to the next line if it is print ln clear okay so all the statements in java should end with semicolon so we added that semicolon also what is this that is a method print ln method it is a method it is predefined and we are calling here right how many methods are there main method is there it is create like we are creating main method here here the syntax of this is what calling calling and creation this also we discussed yesterday right any doubt so method can be created and the format will be like access modifiers 
and then we will keep uh, method name then bracket opening and closing will be there we will discuss this thing again here also you can see method name is con like after method name you can see a back bracket opening and closing right what is that round bracket right so let's consider curly bracket curly bracket is using for what representing block of code then round bracket what is the use we can we can use this for representing method name method name right or else we can use this for representing some conditions or some expressions understanding so what is next what is next one more bracket you can see in that code square what is the use of square bracket listen here so we have discussed about all these three blocks right three brackets wherever you are seeing this bracket you have to identify what is that is that a block of code is that a method bracket or condition or expression what is that bracket called parenthesis is that a parenthesis why why that parenthesis is there so based on that you can decide is that a method call is that a condition or is that an exp expression understanding then by seeing this last bracket you can identify that is a array that is an array so in that way in java we have different type of block of codes like brackets and that each brackets are using for special purpose different purpose block of code method name or uh, parenthesis or array any doubt how many type of data are there in java so data can be number data type or a number kind of data so let's consider a number so to store this number we require a data type so the type in java will be considering as integer for numbers there are different data types which is using for storing the number we will discuss that then character is also a type character means only single one character can be represented so for representing that single character we have to use a single quotes and closing one single character in between in between this single quotes this is character representation so i cannot give any different num n number of characters i can give only one character that is a specialty of character char data type so this is also a data in java then any other data types are the available we can use point values for using point value we can use float float is using for storing the point value data so at that time only one thing i have to focus is floating point value i have to represent using f it can be capital or small letter f then any other data data types are there double double is also a kind of point value data but the thing is i can store more value like more bigger value than this float so that we can represent using we can represent using d or we can just leave that portion we don't have to represent any special character because only two type of point value point value uh, data are there in java that is float and double so if i am representing if i am specially representing float then i don't have to specially represent double because already it is separated right so if floating point value this representation is mandatory so i don't have to specially uh, represent double i can also do i can avoid both are okay in java then 
what another kind of data are there boolean data are there boolean data means i can only store true or false value in this only true or false two kind of data are there available in boolean so that kind of data is boolean data and then any other data are there so as we discussed we have integer short byte long for long data to represent the data as long we have to use at last l it can be small or big all these four data types are using for numbers but the difference will be the range of data that i can store in each data type that you can figure out so these all data types are using for numbers then anything else any other data types are there yes these are the primitive data types available in java so these all data types have data type have its own size difference so based on the size you have to figure out which data type is less in size which data type is more in size that we will discuss again after this we have primitive data type also so these are non primitive this is these are primitive data types and we also have non primitive data type so we can consider string how we can represent a string data string data means it is a message kind of data message message means what i can i can i can uh, represent anything as a message right um this is my data or this is java data this is a message so to represent a message in any programming language we have to enclose this the data inside a double quotes so whatever we are enclosing inside a double quotes will be considering as a string data string or message data so the selected data is a string data now or a message kind of data or text kind of data so these are the different type of datas available in java again we will come back to our datas we have discussed about eight primitive and one non primitive data type right eight primitive and one non primitive data type in the order in the order means what from starting from the size lowest size which one is there boolean then after boolean byte then okay char or short both are same size what is the size of character and short how much it is 16 or 2 16 bits or 2 bytes okay we will write down that also one by one you can also refer the same way comment in your eclipse and note down the sizes what is the size of this boolean one bit one bit what is the size of byte eight bits forms as one byte right then character two bytes short two bytes then what is next integer integer is how, like what is the size of integer four bytes then float float is also four bytes then long and double so long is eight bytes double is eight bytes eight primitive data types are listed
one more data type is there that is non primitive data type what is that string, string. s is capital why it is a class and the representation of string is what double quotes whatever we are giving inside the double quotes is considered as a string data it will not be any other data right even if i am giving 10 what is this data it is not a number 10 is not a number 10 is a string data if i am giving true what is that because we are enclosing that inside a inside double quotes understanding understanding any doubt okay so this is the like according based on the size we are listing the primitive data type each primitive data type how can i create in java so what is the data type data type is boolean right okay so i have to write the data what is the syntax of creating a variable okay what is a variable first of all what is a variable what is a variable what is the use of variable what is the use of data data in java in any programming language what is the use of data for what we are going to store the data use it in future right we will have some uh, operation using data like that is the main purpose of storing data right we have to use the data in some another time so that is why we are storing that we are keeping that as a like pre we are preserving that in our memory listen everyone right so we are preserving a value that is our data so where we can store the data inside a memory right so in java for storing a data in a memory we can use a variable like instead of referring like member inside a memory we are storing the data there will be a memory address consider we are storing the data into this memory address this is the memory address so i am going to store the data 10 after a long time maybe one day minimum one day or 10 days can you remember that memory address no, no. what is the where is the data which memory something three two what like even i don't know because i have not seen i just typed understanding this problem we don't have to encourage so what we are using we are using a name name to the memory location instead of remembering the memory location we are remembering the name we will use the name so that is variable getting my point address of the memory address of the memory location where we are storing the data so we can use a, a name for representing that memory location so that into that memory location we will store the data any doubt so how we can create a variable for storing a boolean data that is the first thing what is the syntax any idea first we have to okay syntax of creating a data a variable is first we have to represent the data type then variable name then equal to what is equal to what is using what is the use of equal to we are giving that whatever we are giving inside this like after that right like after that equal to or right side to the equal to that will be stored inside the variable to the left side correct right side data will be stored into the left side so whatever we are going to give here will be stored inside left side left side it can be it, it will be a variable always so here i can represent a value right after all the statements we will give semicolon any doubt so in the same way can you create different data types in java in the same format for boolean how we can follow this format boolean. what is the data type boolean okay while giving variable name we have to also think about one one point 
if I have a program or project, in that project I am using thousand variables, thousand data I am storing. At that time, if I am using A, B, C, D for random variables, can you identify if you have to make a change at any point of time? The, there is a situation of making a change, change in the data of a variable. Can you identify what is the data? Like where you have to make the change? In which variable you are storing the data? If you are giving the variable name as A, B, C, D. Understanding? I have a big project. I have thousand number of data to be stored. And I have stored that in A, B, C, D kind of variables. At a certain point of time, I have to make a change in the previous variable. How will I find out what is the variable name and where, where should I change the value? Is that easy? Understanding? So what we can use? A proper variable name. So here we are using Boolean data. We can either like based on the situation we can give the name. Here right now we don't have any situation, right? We are just keep creating for a learning purpose. So I am just taking bool. Boolean, bool data. Bool is a variable name. But according, based on the situation, we have to give the name. If the situation is Boolean data, I am using for checking any condition, whether this condition is matching or not. At that time, at that condition, I can give us the variable name. If I am checking, okay, if a uh, participant is present or absent, I have to check. Present or absent means there, there is only two data, right? It can be true or false. To create the Boolean variable, we have to give the data type first. Boolean, then the variable equal to a value. Boolean have only two values. So it can be true value or false value. So we given true to the variable. So this value is going to store inside this variable. In similar way, I can also create variables of different data types. So I have to just mention the different data, the data type and then the variable. I can refer the value. So for referring or representing the da character data, I have to use single quotes inside single quotes one character i can mention so i given g as a character so g is storing inside letter variable then in similar way i can also create all the different type of datas One thing you have to focus is, I cannot use a keyword as my variable name. So here you can see I given data type as byte and also I am giving variable name also as byte, which is not possible. Like even I cannot use any other data types. Double is a data type. It is a predefined word. It is a keyword in Java. Can I use any other keywords? You can see all these things are all these red color things are keywords right so can i use any of that in the place of this one variable no it is not possible so keywords cannot be used as a variable name we have to use something else other than the keywords so here i given byte number so this is not a keyword now this is a variable name so this is possible in java so in this way i can create all the eight primitive data type and also non primitive data type String is a non-primitive data type, so I am giving string data type and variable equal to string should be represented using double quotes. 
so I am giving a double quotes there and I am printing my name also for storing floating data floating data we have to use one representation after the floating point value we have to give f for representing that this is a floating point value float data similarly for long we have to represent as l We have to represent the long value using L value, L uh, capital letter or small letter L. So in this way I can create the variable. Variable is using for what? To storing the data. The data can be in any of this 8 primitive type or the non primitive type so we have to specify the data type first then variable name using equal to i can store the value this value will be stored in the variable so right now i created some variables how can i print all the valuable values which is stored inside the variable so for storing those for printing those values i have to use print statement inside print statement if i am giving bold what will i get as a result will i get bold as output or will i get true as output so this data is not actually a string data if it is a string data we will represent that is that inside the double quotes here we are not using double quotes that means the data is not a string here the data is variable it is not a string data if we are using double quotes then it will consider as a string data and whatever there is inside the double quotes will print in output but here we are not using dub double quotes so it is not considering as a string it will consider as a variable and it will check where what is the value inside the variable and that particular value will be print so we can see here the value is true we have stored true inside the bold so while accessing bold i will get the value true so true will be the data which is going to print in the output So I am printing the first variable value. How can I print the next variable value? Again, I have to use system.out.println. Inside that I can keep the next variable name. So what will I get? I won't get letter. I will get G as output because this is not a string. This is a variable which contains the value G. I will get G as my data similarly i can print all the datas one by one can i print multiple datas using one print statement we will try so i am making these two lines as comments so i am trying to print multiple datas inside the st same st print ln statement so i listed two variables using comma it is showing error what is the error it is showing let's check what is the problem here i am just removing these two variables from this uh, print ln statement and again i am going to type system dot out dot print 
एल एन सो यू विल गेट द प्रडिक्शन इन दिस वे वाइल टाइपिंग द कोड इफ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग यू कैन जस्ट कम हियर एंड प्लस कीप यूर कल्सर हियर एंड प्लस कंट्रोल स्पेस यू कैन सी हाउ मेनी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रिंट एल एन स्टेटमेंट्स आर अवेलेबल इन दिस ऑल प्रिंट एल एन स्टेटमेंट्स we can see only one var only one data type is listed data type and variable only one data type and variable is listed that means we already discussed about this print statement print ln statement print ln is a method in java it is already predefined in our java library and from there we are using this print ln print ln method to print something in the console so using the concatenation technique we will try to display or we will try to print all the datas all the variable datas one by one in one print print statement for that we can use one empty string you can see double quotes right double quotes opening and closing without any character that is given in the system dot out dot print ln and we are adding all the variables one by one to that print ln statement so that double quotes is acting as a, an empty string so string plus the first bold data will give us the string version of bold empty data empty string is double quotes so empty string is added with the bold so bold value is actually true bold is a variable bold value is true so true is added into the string then the next character is next variable is letter so the result of string plus bold is a string along with that string we are going to add letter letter is g so we will get the result as true g true g as a string again that true g string is going to add with number so the number data is what number data is 100 so the result of true g string data plus 100 will become that 100 also will be included into the string so this entire thing is right now a string again with this string we are going to add the next data so that next data value also will be added into the string so as a result we will get true g 100 10 as a string one string inside one string we are included all these different type of datas right now the data type of this result is string so if i have to separate like while printing this if i have to separate all these different datas using a comma so this is the representation i required what change i have to make in my print ln statement i have to add that commas in between that variables right so how we can add the comma in between variables as a string i can add comma and space in between each variables in this same format so while printing it will also print the comma and space let's run the program now see in between each different datas we are keeping one comma and space for that we added a string in between all the variable names so this is also because of concatenation property of string so right now i am going to give you some exercises you have to figure out what is the result of this expressions
so these are the six expressions that I am giving to practice so based on the operator precedence and also concatenation you have to figure out what will be the result of this and I will also I will also explain you or I will also give you the result of each expression one by one in next session